Hi guys, welcome back. Today we're going to be finding out how a multiband compressor works. Multiband compression is a complex technique with a range of applications. Now, this video is not about how to use a multiband compressor, that's a whole other universe. This is about what it does. And you need to know this before you can start to work out how to use it. Basically, incoming signal is split into several frequency bands and each band is treated to its own set of compression parameters. This enables bespoke dynamics control on specified sections of the frequency spectrum. It can be used on a whole mix or a subgroup like a drum bus or individual instruments and it can be really useful on vocals as well. But there are a lot of parameters to work with. Now, of course, you might get lucky and load up a preset and achieve sonic nirvana, but in reality, there will be a significant amount of tweaking to do. In my experience, the very best way of getting you budding producers to understand how a multiband compressor works is to get you to build one yourself by piecing together all of the relevant signal pathways and plugins. So, first we separate our audio into four streams either by duplicating the audio onto new tracks or doing four separate sends to four respective new channels, which is what we'll be doing today. Each stream is subjected to a set of filters to bracket four frequency bands, e.g. low, low mid, high mid and high. Then on each chain after the filter, a compressor is inserted. These compressors will each act as a dynamic equaliser for each frequency band, given a great deal of control over the incoming audio. But think about it, attack, release, threshold, ratio and gain for each frequency band, plus you can adjust the filters to vary the bands being affected, that's a lot of control. But here's a demonstration. Let's listen to the track. So, I've got my audio track, and I need to split that into four separate frequency bands. So here's how I'm going to do it. Um, I'm just going to open up the mixer page. Um, my shortcut for that is X, so you can see how these channels are being created. Over here on the left-hand side, this is my original um, audio track, and there's nothing else set up, so the second channel that you can see is the stereo output. Right, I need four separate pre-fade sends. Uh, so let's go bus. I'm going to go bus. I'm going to use buses 29 through 32. 29, 30, 31, and 32. And they all need to be set to pre fade. Okay, and I'm going to set each send at 0 dB. Okay, I'm also going to set up another bus for the original channel itself. I'll explain why in a minute. That's going to go to bus 28. So all these buses I've been creating, they've created these new channels. Look, AUX1, AUX2, AUX3, AUX4 and AUX5. I'm going to rename AUXes 1 through 4 because that was buses 29 through 32. I'm going to rename them low, low mid. High mid and high. Next one I'm going to name original. That's my original track. And I'm also going to create a submix for each of these as well. The reason that I'm going to have these two extra auxiliary tracks, original and submix, is so that I can A B between the two easily. <clears throat> so each of these, if I just select all of these now and they need to go to another bus, 27, and we'll call that one Submix. 
the output of my four audio channels with the different frequency bands is going to feed into here, submix, and then my original is going to feed into here, original, and I'll just easily be able to use the mute and solo controls to AB between them. Um, if I was to mute the original file, that also mutes the sends as well, so that makes doing AB a little bit more difficult. Okay, now for each of these channels, I'm going to need an EQ. I'm going to use the filters on the EQ, the uh, low pass and high pass filters. So let's just copy that across. And I set these up. Now I'm going to set these so I have a low pass filter here. I'm going to set that at 80 hertz. Next one, I'm going to bracket between 80 hertz and 800 hertz. These are some of the parameters that you might well vary depending on your incoming audio. So I'm going to bracket here 800 hertz. I'm going to go up to 5k. And then final one, high pass filter at 5k. There we go. So my submix audio, if I just, I'm going to hit mute there and then solo. should sound largely similar to my original. If you want to, at this point, you can start to listen to some of these individual frequency bands. Say, for example, high mid. quite a good exercise to do so you can find out how much of each of the source instruments and vocals and stuff is going on in each uh, in each frequency band so there in the high mid obviously an awful lot of guitars and quite a lot of vocals as well a lot of information in high mid let's listen to low mid power in low mid bottom end of the guitars quite a lot of the uh, drums um, and obviously the bass and also some vocal in there as well uh, you can do the same for low and high as well I'll leave that up to you but it's a good exercise to do to find out what's going on in each of those frequency bands and it may be as well um, this is this could be one of the starting points of you learning about multiband compression it may be that you need to start varying those bands a little bit so that you can target specific areas in the frequency spectrum that you want to uh, that you want to compress so let's set up a compressor on the first one i always find a good place to start um, when setting up compressors for multiband compression like this is to start with quite a low threshold I'm going there, 35 and a half, and ratio, a low ratio, 1.2 to 1. Okay, I'm just going to copy that across. We'll have the same compression settings for each one to start with. Okay, let's take a listen. Straight away, you can hear the effect that those compressors are having on those individual frequency bands. Um, and it's at this point now where you get to experiment with the different, uh, the different settings on each of those compressors. 
so you can process those frequency bands separately. Uh, as I'm playing this back as well, you'll have noticed that Logic gives you uh, an indication as to how much compression is going on on each of those bands, and you can see straight away that the compressors are working very differently for each of those bands. <laughs> Now, <clears throat> with the auto gain on at minus 12, if I increase the compression ratio for, let's say, high mid, it will really start to reduce the dynamic range in that high mid band. Let's hear the effect of that. So that's had quite a dramatic effect on the high mid. Now all I've done there is I've moved the compression ratio from 1.2 to 1 to 1.8 to 1 and it's had that much of an effect. So you can see it's quite easy to overdo this multiband compression thing. And subtlety is the key thing here. Your ears will quickly readjust to this new, more pronounced high mid for example. Um, so if you take yourself back to some reference material and recalibrate your ears, that's always a good thing to do when you're learning how to use multiband compression. But there it is. That's basically how to set it up. We've split it into four different frequency bands. We can vary those frequency bands depending on that incoming uh, material. Just make sure that your low pass filter and your high pass filter, um, that they stop and start at the same point and then you're, um, you're not going to be over compressing two bands. And making sure that um, if you start with quite a low threshold, you're going to use just a tiny little bit of ratio. Again, subtlety is a key thing. It's very easy to overdo it. So try it out. Try it out on a full mix. Uh, try it out on, say, for example, a drum bus or some other kind of subgrouping. Um, try it out on a vocal as well. Very interesting what you can do with multiband compression on a vocal. Um, hope this has been useful. Don't forget to subscribe below. Click a thumbs up if it's been of any use to you. And look forward to seeing you again in the not too distant future. Take care. Bye.